Oh, kia ora. Uh, House Churches, it's Guy here, and I'm super excited about sharing this message with you this week. Of course, we are coming into land with our series around uh, the parables that Jesus told and how they help us to interact with the kingdom of God and to hear that message. And of course, understanding how that looks like, uh, what that looks like for us as authentic followers of Jesus in this community. And again, just highlighting the last several weeks, what that looks like for us as we focus in on a little bit more about who we are as as mission-oriented people, people who are prepared to go out and share about the kingdom of God with those around us. And so as we come into land this week with our last week, uh, I'm super excited to share with you about the parable of the sower. And of course, the parable of the sower shows up in Matthew 13, uh, Mark 4 and Luke 8. And so we're going to read from the Matthew um, chapter this week. Uh, And so we're going to have the parable and then the interpretation by Jesus. So Matthew 13 verses 1 to 9, and then 18 to 23. So read along with me. If you haven't got your Bibles out, grab them out now. We're going to read along. So Matthew 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. And such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat in it. And while all the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprung up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what it was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means, Jesus says. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the world, the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was shown. This is the word of the Lord. I think it's super exciting to come to this um, parable today because we've been asking for a wee while or trying to understand and articulate how the kingdom of God has been presented to the people and how Jesus is asking people to hear about the kingdom of God. And so this week I want to just shift it ever so slightly and maybe just ask the pondering question, how, how do we enter into the kingdom of God. And there's many ways we can unpack this, but I think it's super relevant for us this week as we look at the parable of the sower, because the way that we enter the kingdom of heaven, or the way that the kingdom of heaven enters into us, is through hearing. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And so how do we come into that power? How do we have the kingdom come into our lives? It's simply by hearing. And in the old English, it says, take heed how you hear. Uh, And so we have to be careful how we hear. There's uh, two sides to thinking about this and how people hear or how the kingdom, how kingdoms get people to hear. There's an unusualness to the earthly kingdom in which it it comes predominantly through coercion uh, or force. You know, there are many leaders around through the ages and, and around the world who are good at getting uh, getting people to hear. Um, but the kingdom of God comes to those who are good at giving a hearing. So the kingdom of the world asks people to listen, and the kingdom of God says you must listen. You, you only get this by receipt by whether or not you hear me. <laughs> It's up to you. Uh, So listening well, the the kingdom of God is about listening well. It's about listening deep. It's about listening, understanding. This is a a primary skill of the kingdom of God and that we we can't enter the kingdom of God without first hearing it, without uh, the power can't come into our life, without hearing it. The power can't flow through us to other people without hearing it. Your ability to, to sit down and to to take in what someone else is saying, the ability to to truly listen, uh, to hear, is the most important skill. Not true in earthly kingdoms. If we think about through the age, or or even in our present age, 
about many of the leaders that we know, they really just want people to listen to them. They want people to hear what they are saying. They aren't really good at listening. Uh, they are good at getting a hearing. They're good at sound bites. They're good at lobbying. They're getting good at pe they're getting people to do what they want. The best leaders are often bad listeners. Uh, they're really good at getting a hearing, but they are terrible at giving a hearing. So what's really interesting is that we in the in the in really the church or in Christianity or our our faith walk, we so easily conform to the ways of the world. I have been quite convicted actually in giving this message around what it means for us and how I operate as a leader and whether or not you know as we interact with one another. The kingdoms the kingdom comes through listening by hearing and receiving and taking it in and understanding. Whereas worldly kingdoms move often through coercion um, by those who don't listen, but they're making others listen to them. The kingdom of God, as we heard in the parable, comes like a seed. It's a seed. It's by teaching. The seed grows. It's by the Christian, the biblical Christian message. It's by information. Um, hearing the truth that comes through Scripture and through the Word of the Lord and through the Kingdom of God is the way forward, whereas the world is a way through coercion and by force. Let me give you this by way of example. Think back in history to, uh, the, to Alexander the Great. Uh, when he came to town, you knew that he was there. You knew that the kingdom of Alexander the Great was there, and you knew it by one way or another because you either were in the kingdom or you were dead. It was as simple as that. Uh, we can maybe take a bit more of a nuanced look at it through a present day example of democracy. Uh, if you uh, have 51 people who vote for someone and you have 49% people who vote for the other person, then um, the 51% are in and the 49 other percent have to go with it. You you have to be in. It's by, co it's, it's by force that you have to be a part of it. Uh, you, it's not like you get included, you just, you're just in. Uh, you have to submit, you have to serve, you have to be part of the kingdom. So the kingdom of God comes like a seed, not like a boulder, so to speak. Boulders smash on in, they come in hard and fast, but the seed comes in quietly. The boulder revolutionizes things externally, but the seed is very much a, uh, changing things internally. The boulder comes suddenly and coercively. The seed comes organically. It comes gradually. It comes gently. The boulder breaks the land, but the seed transforms the land into a garden or a forest. It transforms things by reorienting its energy into making things, uh, making other things. The boulder, it doesn't just change things, it breaks things, whereas the seed transforms more completely. Alexander the Great would come in powerfully and bloody and just smash everything up and say, here I am. But it only superficially affects things by, by coercion. Only the kingdom of God comes by giving the truth and having it penetrate the heart. We don't necessarily understand this or get it. We operate like the world oftentimes. We, you think that the kingdom of God operates like the kingdom of the earth. Think about it like this. Even John the Baptist, one of the most uh, amazing biblical characters, was in prison, uh, sentenced to death, going to have his head cut off. And he sends a bunch of messengers to Jesus to say, Jesus, are you truly the Messiah? Or should we really be looking for somebody else? And uh, you've got to wonder here, like, whether or not this was a failure of nerve. And, and I would hazard a guess that it wasn't a failure of nerve. It was a, a failure of theology that he either didn't understand or he just forgot. But, you know, he was asking, why are you, you know, I'm the servant of the king and here I am suffering and I'm persecuted and I'm about to have my head chopped off. Do a miracle. Save me. Make me this. Make me that. And Jesus says to John, and he says to you, that's not how my kingdom works. It doesn't work like earthly kingdoms. It doesn't just come smashing in like a boulder and clear everything out and destroy all those who don't believe in me and, and who don't submit to me. No, it comes like a seed. At first, it's, it's vulnerable and it's weak and it's underwhelming. And the kingdom starts as a crazy message as this weak and upside down. It's rejected. There is no way that Anyone would believe that this was going to make a difference or change the world or, or anyone's life, that this message of Jesus that's coming in the most vulnerable and weak way. 
But what's crazy is a king came from heaven and triumphed by being tortured and killed. And because of that, he died for our sins so that we could have life, so that you could lose yourself to find yourself. And this, it's up is down, riches to give away your money, power is, to be, is, is about being humble and serving those underneath you. And, and when we go through uh, pain and, and, and torture and, and suffering, it teaches us dependence on the one who loves us. What a stupid message. That's what's going to change the world. Kingdom comes through hearing the truth. Plant a seed and the entire field changes. Not through force, but through love. It changes it from the inside out. So this whole thing is about hearing this message, this message of this kingdom that is coming into our lives. And here's the piece. Take heed in how you hear. And I think the question here is, have you heard me? And the parable of the soil will be a test about whether or not we have heard. Alexander the Great came to town and you knew it. But Jesus is in this way saying, mine's different. My message is easy to reject. Hey, you have to listen to it. You have to take it in. There are people who hear this message and they think that they are in, but they are not. Luke 9 talks about this, this bloke who comes up to Jesus and he says to Jesus, I will follow you everywhere you go. And I thought about it this week and I thought, what happens if someone comes up to me and says this to me at All Saints? I'd be like, yeah, you're just the kind of person I'm looking for. Let's do it. Let's do some crazy adventures. But not Jesus. Jesus puts him off. Jesus is asking, have you heard me? Or are you just saying all of these things so that you can get me to serve you? Do you understand? Have you really heard? And I wonder if we can just take a, a couple of minutes just to give a brief overview. And I would love for you then to really start to unpack in your house churches what all of this starts to mean to you. So first, we've got these... Um, these different types of seeds that are being planted in different types of soil. And so first um, example we get is that uh, the soil is, uh, so the seed gets planted. Um, a farmer went out and sowed a seed and he was scattering the seed and some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. First, beware of listening with a hard heart. I think that there's a real relevance to this being the fact that there are those who are hearing but only with their mind. It's, it's intellect only. The seed uh, has to be able to germinate in your heart for it to take root. You have to have contact with the kingdom. But if it isn't personal, and it's just simply about your intellect, then there's no way for it to, to empower your heart. You know, has the word of God dawned on you? Have you suddenly, is it resonating with you? Is it like waking up and is it thrilling you? Is it exciting you? Have you, have you ever felt like it's just got hold of you and it's like, come on! Or is it just simply sitting in your mind and you're like, yeah, okay, I, I can read that and I can understand that, but it's not capturing your heart. The second one is this. As he was, uh, some fell in rocky places where it did not have much soil and it sprang up quickly because the, the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up and the plants were scorched, they withered because it had no root. This is talking about those with a shallow heart. They receive the joy. It goes beyond the theoretical. They accept Jesus. Roots can take, they, they, it comes in, but the roots can't take the heat. And so when trouble comes or suffering comes, they, they turn their back on the kingdom. It, it all gets a little bit hard. You know, what, what use is it to me? They, they never really understood. They thought that they were, they were entering, but what they wanted was they wanted Christ to enter into their kingdom. They wanted Christ to come into there. They wanted, they wanted a blesser of their life, not a saviour. They wanted a service provider. The things that they worshipped were things that were really important to them. And when the sun came up and it scorched them, the things when they when they took on Jesus, it was those things that they lost in the heat and they, they weren't up for that. The trust never really went from themselves to their saviour. You know, thirdly, uh, there are those who, uh, but uh, there are other seed that fell among the thorns which grew up and choked out the plants. And, you know, I think this third group, you know, it's about those who don't listen to the word of God. They listen to the word of God, but with a divided heart. And this is, it's hard to tell this piece. This piece gets, is difficult. You know, they have root, there's root, they stick around, uh, they're in, they're in on the Jesus piece, but there's thorns that grow up and, and chokes them out. 
they, they're committed to Christ, but but the control in their life is shared. It's like they want Jesus, but they also want the things that are in their lives. And so their life is choked. It, it's hard. They don't, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's hard to see healing. It's, it's hard to see God moving in their life. It's hard to see transformation. There's always maybe doubt or anxiety because you're not quite sure where you are. Are, are you here or are you there? And, and which bit is taking control? And, and who has the control on your life? And it's, it's choking because you're trying to, it's divided loyalty. This group, this third group, it's interesting because as I was doing some reading, this is the most miserable group because the first two groups have left. They've gone, yeah, I'm in, but no, or I'm not in, and I'm just going to go and live my life. And and they're doing what they're doing. Now, I don't think it's it's good, and I think it's going to be hard for them, but but they're not dividing their loyalty. Whereas in, in the fourth group, we can articulate as a group of people who are, are all in on the kingdom and they're seeing transformation and the word of the Lord has sunk deep in their heart and there is is awesomeness happening in there but this group is miserable and you have two things in your life that are that are making you miserable you you're kind of not all in on one and you're not all in on the other and you and you're trying to operate in both senses but but this one you don't see the changes you don't see transformation you know there's a passage that says oh lord ignite my heart to fear thy name you know from the from the psalm or to give it in the newer language give me an undivided heart that i might fear your name so there's three points here. One, don't listen with a hard heart. Let the word of God affect you personally. Let the seed of the word of God go down in your heart. Second, don't listen with a shallow heart. Recognize the word of the kingdom that you aren't just needing help, but that you are a sinner, that you've been trying to live and trying to keep God out of your life. You've been trying to live it independently. You've been trying to live it for yourself. You know, even if you're the most moral, upstanding person, you are doing it alone, keeping God out. We are people who are in need of forgiveness. We are sinful people. And I wonder if this if this starts to feel radical to you or even maybe a little bit fundamentalist or even just really super nasty and grotty to listen to, maybe it's too hard or it's too hard. There's a chance that you're not maybe seeing the word of the Lord enter into your heart. Maybe we haven't fully understood it. Maybe get, let's get beyond our mind. Let's get beyond our emotions to whether the word of the Lord creates loving obedience, where we can articulate that we are broken and that we need Christ and that there are things in the way. The message, it's the message of the kingdom. What the message of the kingdom shows what he has done for us. We are able to articulate what he has done for us. And three, and this is, I think, a really powerful piece, and then we come into land that maybe we are forgetting that the soil needs a gardener, that we have rocks and thorns in our soil. And it is not our job to try to get those rocks or thorns out of the soil, but it is to be the soil that receives the seed. You know, we are here to say, God, I will hear you. I will hear you about your kingdom. I will receive the kingdom of God. Let the seed germinate and plant in my life. But you are going to need to take these rocks and thorns out of my life. It is not my job. And what's he going to say to you? He's going to say, I will. I'm the gardener. Let me do that. And not only that, but let me show you when I did do that, I took those thorns from you and I wore them on my brow. And I took those rocks out of your garden and they buried me in them. I have taken those things from you, and that is why I am here. Take heed how we hear. I would love for you to unpack these different pieces of the soil, uh, of the seeds in the soil, and where that lands for us, and how that helps us to articulate how we hear the kingdom. And so, as you go in your house church, please discuss, push back, question. It's it's exciting to go on this journey together but how we might be missional in our community, how we might have others hear about the kingdom of God, how we might receive the kingdom of God. But first it comes through hearing. The kingdom of God comes through hearing. Jesus, come as we come to our house churches this morning. Be with us, each one of us. Um, speak to us. May we be empowered by what you're doing in our lives and may we chew through this together. May we push and pull each other close to you and may we be open to hearing your kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Ka kite.